Hi there, my name is Mark Barnabas, your Data Protection Pal, and I'm here to share with you about the Personal Data Protection Act of Singapore. Oh, it's such a mouthful. It is called the PDPA for short, all right? So the first thing, first thing we're going to talk about is the purpose of PDPA. Now, the purpose of PDPA is to govern how organizations collect, use, disclose, and store the personal data they have collected from their stakeholders, sometimes customers, so as to protect the rights of individuals. Now, the PDPA ensures that the data collected is reasonable and with the right purpose. For more details, please go for course, yeah? Now, uh, I'm going to talk about to you today about the three key components of the PDPA. Now, the first key component is that of the NRIC, which is place, uh, which was enforced more strictly in 1st September 2019, where it became outlawed to collect NRIC, unless, of course, you have the right reasons and the right purpose for doing so, which includes the organizations such as telcos, hotels, and so on and so forth. You can read more about it in the following link below. In general, in Singapore, it, to comply PDPA, no organization should collect the NRIC or the FIN without a clear purpose and reason. And if you are to collect the NRIC or FIN, including the numbers of course, you have to demonstrate that you have added protection measures for these personal data. Second, the second important part of PDPA is the rules on do not call DNC. This was the first uh, rule that was introduced in 2014. In general, if a person puts himself on the DNC list, for instance, which means if you have put yourself on the DNC list, nobody should be calling you for marketing purposes or sending you uh, advertising messages unless you have given them consent. So you can read more about it in this link below. Now, the third component of PDPA is the nine obligations, which includes consent, Notification, purpose, accuracy, protection, retention, access and correction, transfer, and finally accountability. So uh, these a lot more you have to read up on other causes. I'm just going to give you the uh, overview today. But the purpose of PDPA is really to ensure that our companies or organizations build trust among our organizations. That is why there is the trust mark that is introduced by IMDA and for companies that do not comply with PDPA, unfortunately, there will be enforcement made by the Commission. So finally, to summarize this component of the three components of PDPA, first, please make sure that if you have NRIC collection, make sure you take special precautions and measures to protect them. Secondly, do not call if you are doing marketing, make sure you have measures to ensure that the people you're calling are not on DNC or you have got consent. And third, find out more about the nine obligations and how you as a uh, owner or DPO or even a staff of the organization, organization can comply with the nine obligations of PDPA. So I've given you a quick tree summary. I hope you take your first step towards compliance. Uh, if you need help, please contact us and we'll be glad to assign a consultant to help you or well, I can come and see you too. So anyway, hope you have a good time today. See you then and start your journey to being PDPA compliant. Good day and see you soon.